Jesus is on the cross, he's being mocked, he's being flagellated, he's being betrayed, and he's there on the cross. Reading from verse 33. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. One man ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes down to take him. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus heard his cry and saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the Son of God. Some men, women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Wardman, Mary the mother of James, the younger and of Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, these women who had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. Even if you are new to this story, nobody here should uh, really be shocked by this uh, macabre tale. I don't think anybody could really be that naive about uh, human history and some of the horrors that it contains. Human history is full of incidents of people treating others in less than a human and dignified manner. The horrors of the killing fields of what was Cambodia, uh, what is now Cam Campuchia, the systematic brutality of Nazi Germany, and the macabre excesses of Uganda in the last century. And just some examples of how this has been repeated through history, including at times with even the church as the perpetrator, sadly. And Jesus on the cross, Jesus has pointed to this moment throughout his ministry. Jesus is certainly not surprised by man's inhumanity to man. And Jesus has pointed forward to this event all through his ministry. In fact, the night before he had sweated even drops of blood, such was his stress levels. <coughs> Jesus knew what we call the Old Testament. Jesus knew originally there was no sin or evil in the world. Jesus knew that humanity had once enjoyed a perfect and harmonious relationship with God. God was their God and they were his children. Jesus knew that humanity chose to disobey this God and that caused sin and evil to enter into this world. But Jesus also knew that God had promised one day that relationship would be restored. So, you know, through the patriarchs, Jesus knew the story of Abraham, Isaac, Joseph, etc. <coughs> Jesus knew these people, this called out nation of Israel, were waiting for their Messiah to come. And some of Jesus' first recorded words were, Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Jesus continually affirmed who he was, this long awaited for Messiah. Jesus had pointed to this day, this specific moment of his being on the cross throughout his ministry. And in Matthew's Gospel alone, three times Jesus tells his disciples, I'm going to the cross, and they still didn't get it. In fact, I'm sure, I'm sure he said to Peter, are you so thick? <laughs> I've been with you all this time and you still don't get it? Leading up to his death by crucifixion, uh, Jesus was mocked by different groups of people. Now, from the breadth of society, Jesus is mocked by ignorant Romans, irreligious Gentiles, religious Jews and their leaders, and finally common criminals, all having a go at him. But if you're the Son of God, come down here. Get yourself off. Jesus is rejected, mocked, insulted, spat upon, scorned and flagellated. There he is. Ridiculed and nailed to a cross where he died. That's the events of what we call Good Friday.